Hello all, this is Daniel Berman, the USCF expert 2131. I've been away for a couple of weeks on a business trip in Orlando and I'm glad to be back and doing some more chess videos. And before I begin, I'd like to thank three people for their positive comments and their suggestions. And the first person is my good friend MJ Shark. And if you haven't seen his YouTube site, you gotta go. His chess videos are excellent. And also, Green Castle Block, thanks for your positive comments. And also, Cooper324, he suggested that I put coordinates around the board for those people who are less familiar with the algebraic notation. Thank you, Cooper324. And finally, I'd like to answer a YouTube viewer's question about why do I show problems like these if they never actually happen in practical chess? And the answer is twofold. The first one is that uh, problems like these force you to think outside the box, and I think it's just good exercise for your brain. And uh, hopefully by solving problems like these, it will help you solve problems over the board. And additionally, the entertainment value. Problems like these are fun, and especially this one. So let's begin. And the problem here is white to play and checkmate black in 16 moves. And you will notice that white is currently in check by the rook on f3. So what would happen if white took that rook on f3? And the answer is stalemate. Black has no squares. Um, you can't go to b8, and you can't, you can't go to a7. So white being up seven pawns does not want to stalemate black. So what can do white do to win the game in 16 total moves? So why don't you pause the video here and give it a try. And if not, I'll give a couple hints along the way. Okay. Well, why don't we take a look at a couple variations first. The first is king going up, and the second will be king going down. So king going up, let's say king goes to, to b4. Well, black has a pretty simple stalemate idea. And you can force stalemate by just checking on the third rank. No matter where white goes, black will check on the third rank, except if he goes to c8, where this forces the stalemate. No matter how white captures, it's stalemate. And if he goes towards the king side, it's also going to be stalemate. No, nothing you can do to get out of these checks. You can try it. So that's going king up to b4. But what happens if he goes king down to a2? Well, this is a quicker stalemate. Rook a3, king b1, rook a1 stalemate. Actually, king takes rook. Then now this is stalemate. Black has no squares. So that is my first hint. White cannot go up or down with the king. What can he do? So why don't you pause the video and give it another try and come back. Okay, well, I hope you figured out that you can't move your king. You actually have to make a pawn move or moves. So what happens if he makes a pawn move like c3? Well, let's take a look. White actually opened up the c2 square for his king. So he has a new square to move to. Unfortunately, on this move, white must go king to e4 or, or d4. So black gets a famous third rank stalemate idea. So it turns out moving one pawn is not enough. And the answer is white must make two pawn moves to give himself lift or squares for his king to run to. And by a sequence of moves, white will eventually go around in circles and then open up the position where on one final check that black does to white, white can counter with a check that check meets black. So that's my final hint. So why don't you pause the video and try it from here. Okay, well, I hope you uh, solved this problem, and and let's just continue on to the very end. And this is the first pawn move that white needs to make. 
This is the second pawn move. And now white has the square c2 and e2 to run to. And now it's white's 14th move. And in two moves, he will checkmate black. So you can pause it right here, or you can just watch. Can you find mate in one? Rook takes rook checkmate. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.